So I took this logo and I chose two colors, this one and this one. So I declared them in my palette. Anything that comes on the screen should be absolutely necessary. Icons are usually helpful when you have a very long list. In the last video, I did a quick UI redesign exercise for IRCTC's mobile experience. Today, I will redesign their listing screen, the screen that comes once you have decided where you want to go. I will take you through my entire design process and at the end, give you a list of free resources that you can use to become a better UI designer, to improve your UX design skills and get a very, very good job. Before I move forward, I want to acknowledge some mistakes that I made in the last UI thanks to all the comments that I received. Number one, there are no round trips for train bookings. So that was a huge mistake that I did while designing the entire UI. The input field labels can be more accessible. So instead of making it very, very gray, it's very important that the contrast stays intact so that if anybody sees the screen in sunlight or even at the railway station, the labels are visible. The vertical height was so long that it might not fit on small phones phones which are very very common in the Indian market. In the looking for something else section, having different colored icons would have made more sense rather than relying on too much of minimalism rather than just sticking to one single color. Sometimes the shade itself makes it very very clear that this is something else. I had included the option to choose the number of passengers in the first step itself but in the actual flow, the user first has to see the availability, then the train class and then details about the passengers. Even in that, there is a limit of five passengers per ticket. I missed out on these features because my goal was to do a quick UI exercise. I didn't go through each and every flow individually because this is not a UX audit altogether. It was just a very quick sprint on how we can make the UI more clean or more spacious. Real apps are not designed this quickly. There's a lot more to an app than just UI in the first place. And to be honest, when you make this design, it's very important that you show it to other people and it's a very iterative process. I am specifically calling out these mistakes because I want you to recognize how important research, feedback and regular iterations are when you're actually redesigning a UI. You need to show it to more people who are regular users of the app and then fix your blind spots, help fill in the gaps. Now thanks to Arup and Saurabh, uh, I got to realize that these were some mistakes so thank you so much for helping me out uh, improve that previous video. Now let me show you the next screen in line. This is the listing screen where once you have chosen your destination, IRCTC gives you a list of trains. So I have put two screenshots here on the very left. This is what happens when you put in your to uh, and from. So it, in this case, I had chosen New Delhi to Bangalore and I have given the date as well. And once I select on any of these train classes, it opens up this modal where you can choose your class and your row and then followed by your date. So you first choose 3A and then decide if it is available for this Saturday or Sunday or even Monday as well. And then at the bottom, you have your fare and then eventually you can also see the a fair breakup. Now, as I said, not a UX audit, but basically just a way to minimalize or just to simplify the entire UI. So in this case, you have choice of date and city. You also have an edit button. In one viewport, you can see at least three trains. In this specific search, I got four trains. There's a search button and then within a specific train, uh, you have your train number, you have the train name, you have starting date and time, you have ending date and time, then station names for both the sites, then the train rows and then within that different categories and then you also have a root button. Now instead of redesigning every single thing what I have done here is that I've sort of split this into different parts. So most importantly there's a header component which is right here where you have your date and your to and from destination. I have removed Ask Disha 2.0 and the IRCTC logo simply because I feel that just having a back button makes more sense. From a booking perspective they don't really need these icons right now. So in on the top you can just say book tickets and then at the bottom you can have two things you have from and then you have two. Now that I'm looking at this UI, I can probably also add an arrow emoji, which would probably just indicate that we are going from left to right. But yeah, I've also had like a cute train button in the icon. So it's absolutely clear. Uh, at the bottom, you have an option to switch in between dates. So when I was designing, I realized that for me, it's very, very important to quickly compare prices across different days. Uh, this is something that I have regularly seen even in flight bookings. Uh, so if I don't find something on Friday, I should be able to quickly switch to a Saturday. 
uh, and then quickly swipe through. Another interaction that I've made here is that once I have decided that it is the Friday, once I scroll up, maybe this thing can minimize and occupy less vertical space. So as we had in the previous comments, people said that not everybody's phone is that tall. So I have to be very cautious about not wasting too much of space for just the header component. And then if you want to change any of the destinations, you can always click on the edit icon. So that would take you back to the main home screen or maybe you can have another pop-up coming in. So we're not going too deep into those iterations, but basically this pen icon is now on the top right corner. Uh, one very important thing to note here is that these are variants for two different states. Uh, there's also the text on the left and right. Basically, I have made these in a way where the left one is a different component altogether because this is an auto layout, which is left aligned. This one is an auto layout, which is right aligned. So you can't really reuse the same component, right? Coming to the train card, which is this part right here. I wanted to make sure that all of this information is very, very easy to read and it is spaced out, right? So you're not instantly intimidated. So what I've done here, let me just take out this one single card and let's study this separately. On the very top, you have the train name and then below the train name, we have the train number. And instead of saying Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it can just say daily. And if let's just say that it is from just weekdays, then we can probably just call it as weekdays. Or if you feel that it is just on specific days and it can be Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So I think the auto layout has this entire thing together. But yeah, you can simply have the text at the bottom to make sure that there is not a lot of clutter at the bottom, right? Because anyway, these typefaces were very, very small. Uh, it's just better to keep this information right below the train itself. Uh, one thing that I wish the app had uh, was a tag that quickly lets me compare between the fastest options, the cheapest options and all the newest options, right? So I think this is one feature that they can always consider. Uh, for example, let me just show you this component right here. So in my properties tab, I can switch in between fastest, cheapest and new, right? So for me, I always look at the fastest option. Like this is just the thing that I uh, keep on doing. I personally feel that if this feature is there, it would be very, very helpful. Then once I have written the train name, show route can be on the right side. So having show route right next to your SBC Rajdhani makes more sense. And then I think if you click on show route right here, this can expand into another card. I haven't sort of thought about how that uh, entire interaction would work. Uh, but instead of accordion, it can simply be a button as well, which can eventually open up a pop-up. Then for this part where we are showing the timeline we had 24 june saturday to 26 june monday in this case we have the same text but i have given time higher hierarchy so the thing is that on the very top of my design i am already showcasing the fact that it is on this date uh, right so i personally feel that rather than giving this a lot of emphasis i would certainly give the time a uh, more reference because for me time is way more valuable like i personally miss out these informations very very uh, easily i would always remember that i'm traveling to 24 june but but I would not remember what time is my train, right? So 33 hours, 30 minutes, this thing stays static. Uh, so this thing goes absolutely well. Uh, now that I think about it, we can always have an arrow on the very end that makes it very, very obvious that you're going from left to right. Now talking about the station name, this again, now that I have received the feedback, uh, the correct way to do this would be to probably have a darker text. So this can probably be regular. And if not contrast one, we can obviously have it slight lighter but yeah having a uh, contrast at this level makes more sense then you have the station name and the short form i've put them into three lines not in a single line because if this is also a very long string and even if this is a very long string, it might just intersect. It might just become very crowded. So I've split them into three lines. One feature that I would really, really want is to just have a tag that gives me the number of options available, right? So if just five options are available, I would quickly book it. It would become a nudge for me to quickly lock my seat. Uh, if it is selling out fast, that would also become a nudge. And if it is sold out, it should still appear on my screen uh, because then I can switch the date and then get the same train again, right? So if it shows me this card, then I know that, okay, Okay, maybe I might not be able to go today, uh, but I can always go tomorrow. So this is a, a tag that I had put. And I also feel like the pricing can come upfront for me. Pricing also matters a lot. Uh, I am assuming that for a lot of other consumers, just knowing the pricing upfront would make a lot of sense. So it can say 800 rupees onwards, which means that the cheapest price would be from 800 rupees. Uh, and then if I click on choose seats, it should then take me uh, to a different flow, which can be something like this, right? So because there's a lot of information 
information available here and i don't want to put all of these things right here because it was becoming very very scary for me when i looked at it i was very confused as to what i should do so maybe if they click on choose seats all of the decision making for this specific train can be forwarded to the next screen right so not to clutter it all together so in terms of creating all the combinations these four would be the combinations all together uh these are the variants so you can see that you have these three items for uh these tags and if i had to compare them left to right this is how it can look like right so this is how it was before and this is how it is after one disadvantage of the design that i've made here again is the fact that it is again taking a lot of vertical space uh one more thing that i had missed out was the fact that they give you an option to search and four trains found along with an option to speak into the search as well as a speaker to reveal the results you can actually listen to what the app is saying so i have missed out here uh so of course this is like my first iteration let me know in the comment section if you have even more ideas if you can sort of fit more number of trains in one single go could be an accordion could be just the name of the train and then if you click on it it expands another variation that we can probably think about is that if you sort of click on sbc rajdhani then other details come in then you click on choose seat so you can show more listing right but this is not a very ideal solution because the font size is very very small for me it was very intimidating so this is the interaction that i had in my mind that as i scroll up uh, this thing would minimize so it would occupy less space and then i will be able to see my cards and uh, then just a very small nudge that once you hit this ceiling you should always have a shadow let me show you that if the shadow wasn't there right this is my real design if i were to remove this shadow uh the issue is that sometimes you end up with this thing right here so the edges they sort of blend together but if you have a shadow then there's a clear distinction that these are two overlapping layers right so i hope this made sense now you folks need to realize that this is the first draft of a very quick ui exercise if i had to really really take this project ahead i would create a high fidelity prototype of whatever that i've made including all the possible combinations of the user flows on figma put it into a mobile phone and then give it to users give it to people who have already been using this app then the same design would go through multiple iterations multiple rounds of feedbacks and then again prototyping till we are very very confident about the redesign finally once the prototypes are confirmed we would create a handoff page in our figma files where we will make sure that the developers know what is the logic how do the flows work what are the styles what are the color palettes etc before i end this video you should know that we have a free 15 episode long ux design course available in both hindi and in english if you really really want to learn this skill and enter this industry as a proper proper experienced designer i would recommend you to watch these videos as soon as you can once this 15 episode playlist is done we have created a ui redesign playlist which is a very actionable a very practical playlist just like this video in the end you need to watch a video called insider tips for getting a ux design job this should come at the very very end because you first need to know your hard skills then you need to know some practical skills and once you're done with those you need to understand the entire approach behind getting a good job if you honestly follow the videos that i have listed right here i can assure you that in just 6 to 8 months where every single day you're spending just 2 hours a day just 2 hours a day for 6 to 8 months if you follow this well you will be ready to get a very very good ux design internship don't aim for a full time job always prefer to enter a company on a ux design internship once you enter for 3 months or 6 months i always recommend 6 months once you intern for 6 months you will understand how real apps are built you will understand whether that company is good for you or not and then you should negotiate a full time offer if you do play your cards well you can easily negotiate between 9 to 12 lakh rupees a month assuming that you followed everything that i have mentioned assuming that you've been working on your prototyping and communication skills assuming that you are actually a good problem solver and you did well in that 6 month internship now obviously you will say Anj, these are so many things, and you've given such a long homework, folks. This is how it works. If you're really, really interested in having a good job, this is the pathway. I've given it to you for free. You can follow it and actually change your life. Now, I will be looking forward to your comments on today's redesign as well. In fact, I'm going to be uploading a lot of such videos where we will be picking real applications and we will redesign their UI. Apart from design, please make sure that you're keeping yourself updated on all the latest AI tools. We've been making some very, very cool free videos on ChatGPT. Mid journey and prompt engineering folks 
I really don't know how to make you understand how valuable prompt engineering is going to be, especially for creative professionals, especially for folks in the marketing and copywriting industry. Please make sure you learn from these free videos. There is a lot in them because this year, your ability to talk to AI is going to be as important as your ability to talk to human beings. You'll find a link to my free ebook on chat GPT and prompt engineering in the description. You will find free videos, free courses, everything available in the description. Make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you stay updated with all the cool videos that we upload. With that being said, I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.